Oh, well, thanks, Mark. I appreciate that. That's very kind of you. So without further ado, let's talk uh, aviation from last week. Uh, let's talk about, let's do a quick review for those who aren't too familiar. Let's do a quick review. We'll give you 60 seconds to remember. And let's take a look at DFW's weather today. So we've got the METAR here for DFW. And we've got a temperature currently of 22 degrees Celsius. Another nice day here in uh, DFW. But uh, I want us to look at the METAR here. So let's zoom in a little bit on that. There we go. A little more. Oh, come on, focus. There we go. All right, so we've got the METAR focused in right there. It is sunny out today. Yeah, the wind is, is fairly strong. So, um, yeah. All right, now that we've got the METAR focused in there, remember from uh, last week's discussion, we talked about weather and the importance of it. Um, and uh, this is definitely, yeah, I'm, I'm getting that blurry fixed up uh, for now. And uh, so let's review. From left to right, we're looking at weather conditions here in the United States, and we're looking at the airport DFW. So again, from last week's lesson, let's go left to right and explain what a pilot or a flight dispatcher is looking at. Uh, and we'll answer questions uh, in about, a, let's go a half hour, Mark, we'll take a break. So save your questions for later. We'll have them in about a half hour. So what we're looking left to right here. So again, a review, the airport is KDFW, which is Dallas Fort Worth International Airport. The date is the 23rd. The, uh, the time is 1853 Zulu. So that was recorded about 50 minutes ago. The visibility is 10 statute miles, so I can see 10 statute miles, which is good. Uh, there are few clouds at 25,000 and a temperature of 22 degrees Celsius with a dew point of minus 1 and an altimeter of 30.09er. So that is a METAR. Now, I did not say one thing and that is the wind. And it's the third number there in the METAR with the wind. And that is a 340. So the wind is coming from 340, 12 knots, gusting to 18 knots. So that's a review of the METAR. Uh, and uh, good idea, Mark. So we'll take questions in about a half hour. And I uh, just want to review with you some of that for METAR. So yeah, again, the wind speed is 340, 12 knots, gusting to 18. So this is what we call a METAR, meteorological observation that we'll see updated every hour. So like your current conditions, updated every hour. And so we'll be better prepared when we're doing spotting. Because remember, one of the things, if you're a spotter and you like to go out at the airport, you want to know which way the planes are landing. And the wind and the planes will always land into the wind whenever possible, and they will always land and take off into the wind. They want to land into the wind, and they want to take off into the wind. So today we're on a north flow with DFW, and that let's see if that's true. So let's go to flight radar and check that out real quick. There's Bush Intercontinental, but we're going to go up to DFW, and look at that. We've got uh, North Flow here. So uh, zoom it in so it's a little more angled there at the uh, camera. But we've got a North Flow. So you see here these planes are 
landing to the north. They're, they are pointed to the north, remember, because our winds are 3, 4, 0, 12, gusting 18 knots. So we are taking off, we're taking off, and we're landing in to the wind. So that's, uh, you can see that fairly well. I am on YouTube, but uh, I've thought about expanding. So, but of course, we want the winds. Like, here's American 176 Heavy from Tokyo. And we want to land into the wind here as a pilot. So, it's going to be landing to the north with a north wind. So, that's just a quick review again of the weather uh, system here. So, Let's move on today to today's lesson. The lesson is part one of a part two or possibly part three about air traffic control today. So this is what we call here in the United States. This, as I zoom back out, as the National Airspace System status update. And what we want to do... So we want to take a look at that, and as you can see, there are a few airports that are listed on there today. So for the FAA, for the United States, the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration, puts this out every day and is updated 24 hours for aviation situations and perhaps issues with the aviation system throughout the United States. It's really kind of nice. I quite like it. And what we're looking at here are different airports that might have issues today. And they'll publish this and say you've got departure delays. For example, let's look at San Francisco here at the bottom. If we can, uh, I'll zoom out a little bit here. Yep, okay, so San Francisco is at the very bottom. And as you can see, San Francisco has what's called a ground delay program, and we'll explain that in, in a second. But uh, it's 33 minutes due to runway construction. So the first thing that I'd like you to do is pay attention to uh, this website. This is the arrow right here, the nasstatus.faa.gov. JB says, uh, recently, awesome. And for those who are just joining us, we will uh, take time to chat. Um, I'll talk about for about 20 minutes, and then we're going to take a break to answer your questions and also talk uh, more about it. So you guys can obviously, I want to get your feedback and comments as well. So write down this website. This is for the United States from the Federal Aviation Administration. The website is NAS status, so NAS S-T-A-T-U-S dot F-A-A dot gov. And this website will provide you a lot of great information if you are a plane spotter uh, in the United States or want, it, it's everything from being a plane spotter to being a pilot to being a flight dispatcher to, hey, why is my flight delayed? You can actually go and research. Sometimes the rampers or the guest Gate agents don't give you a whole lot of information. They just say, oh, it's delayed due to the weather. You know, well, this, for example, uh, you can look at this website and find out for yourself. You don't have to wait for the ramp to determine this. So, for example, like we talked about uh, with San Francisco, SFO, right here at the bottom of the screen, right? It says there's a ground delay program that is averaging, averaging a delay of 33 minutes due to runway construction. And that's going to be going on for quite a while, by the way. So that's that's a little heads up that your flight might be delayed slightly. Uh, let's see if we have any weather delays. No weather delays today, which is good. That's always a good sign for the aviation weather world. And uh, it's very helpful. So if you're just tuning in, make sure to smash that thumbs up button, like, and subscribe. So... Again, the website, let's start there, NAS status, so N-A-S-S-T-A-T-U-S dot F-A-A dot gov, and I'll make sure to put this in the uh, comment section below 
and I will put it in the chat right now as well. So NAS status dot, whoops, don't you hate autocorrect? Yeah, <laughs> you could base, Joe, that's right, you could basically do a GDP every day. Yep, it's true. NAS status dot FAA dot gov. All right. It's true, San Francisco is like a daily, daily uh, GDP. Yeah, so the next thing, all right, so we started there. And you can go to that website and find out for yourself. This is, again, this is only for really the United States uh, or through the FAA administration. Now, the next thing I want to do for you is uh, remember... One thing to keep in mind that in aviation, we go through Zulu time, all right? So if you're a pilot, if you're a flight dispatcher, if you're air traffic control, you're going to go in Zulu time, all right? So just remember that as we look at some of the things in detail. So there we go. I switched it to Zulu time, and that's really what we want to be on. There's a little icon there at the upper right-hand corner of the screen. Uh, you can't see it, but it, you can choose between local and uh, Zulu time. And I always recommend, uh, if you're new, you can do local. But if you want to work in aviation, uh, be aware of uh, the uh, Zulu time. Zulu time. All right. Whoa, look at that. We got a ground stop here that just popped up from Aspen, Colorado, due to volume. So that means we'll talk about that in a second. So again, this is a really helpful tool, this website for the airspace system. Uh, and uh, the to answer your question, Susan, really quickly, the Federal Aviation Administration is over, overseen by NASA. So uh, that's kind of interesting. Hey, Tommy, good to see you. Welcome in. We're doing uh, Talking ATC today. So we want to start there at the website. Now let's go a little bit further on this website. Let's go down a little bit and uh, see what we see here. Now, we've got two boxes that say in route planned and terminal planned. So let's go with the talk about those boxes here for just a second. So in route is going to be the routes that are set up through the air traffic control. And if you're familiar with a uh, jetway map or a aeronautical map, there are lines that cross throughout the United States on different routes, uh, on different navigational aids. And so these in route events are giving dispatchers and pilots a heads up and air traffic control about pro probable issues in dealing with the routes. So I'm going to stop there on that. I won't talk any much further. I don't want to confuse you. But I, I want to touch a little bit more on these terminal planned events here on the, uh, the left box, the terminal planned. And I've got three lines here of notification. And so let's go down to each one of these. It says, after 20Z, they say a Boston ground stop or delay is possible. After 20Z, there could be a Las Vegas ground stop delay program possible. And until 2Z, there might be a Newark ground stop delay program possible. Uh, and so what that's saying to flight dispatchers, to pilots, to those uh, air traffic controllers is there's the possibility that these might be issued a ground stop or a ground delay program due to the fact that there is currently a lot of demand on in these pl uh, plane in these airports due to the fact that they can't handle all the demand. I mean there's only so many air traffic controllers, right? So Keep that in mind when you go to the homepage, scroll on down to this and see 
what might be possible later on in the day. So one of the things that I do when I go out spotting is I look at this page and say, okay, am I going to have a ground stop in DFW? Is there going to be an issue as far as arrivals coming uh, at that airport or coming from an airport? So this is also a helpful tool for you as the passenger to see, okay, is there a possibility, again, that my flight might be delayed? You know, hey, there's a, there, I'm trying to fly to Boston, and I might be delayed due to a ground stop. It's saying possible. It's not saying it will happen. This, these boxes up here are active events. So the, it says active airport events, whereas the terminal plan is just a forecast, so to speak. All right? So that's the home page. So we've got active airport events. We've got forecast events, either en route and terminal plan. And the next thing I'd like to do is go to the full operations plan. And this is really where your brain explodes. So I hope that if you have the opportunity on your phone or computer, again, type in the website, nasstatus.faa.gov, so you can follow along. So it's nasstatus.faa.gov. So about 10 more minutes, and we'll go ahead and answer questions and take a little break. But I wanted to go on to this website, all right? So you see there at the top, we have what's called an Air Traffic Control System Command Center. Let me show you what I clicked on again. I clicked on the button down here called Full Operations Plan. These guys see it? Full Operations Plan. And... Yeah, I think so, Joe. That's a possibility. So, uh, yes, that is a possibility. So we'll talk about that in a second. We'll look at the radar in a second. But what we want to look at here is the full operations plan. So, again, this button down here, it says full, or view, view full operations plan. All right. And inside this, the Air Traffic Control System Command Center, which... The command center is located outside of Washington, D.C. It's going to give me everything that they expect to happen throughout the day. And it's continually updated. So you want to make sure that you refresh it. So as we scroll down, let's hear. Let's look at the bottom. Is the president going to be traveling today? Is the vice president going to be traveling today? Here at the very bottom. It says VIP movements here in the United States. And that is the president's not going to be traveling today which would make sense because he uh, is hosting the governors of the United States at the White House. So he's hanging out at the White House. So no VIP movements today. The next thing we're going to look at is SpaceX Starlink. Okay, so what's Starlink going to be doing? Are they going to be doing launches? Are they going to be doing satellite launches? Well, if they are, here's some possible times that could be happening. Okay, as we go further up, here's something you really want to pay attention to, uh, and we'll go into this in greater detail, but you've got runway equipment system impact reports. And just for an example here, I'm going to put that paragraph in the center screen, and I'm going to highlight it right here. So, well, let's do, it, do this. Um, let's be careful here. And this is only our second broadcast, so thanks for sticking with me and being patient. And thanks, everybody, for tuning in, smashing that thumbs up button, and being part of the broadcast, because I think you'll learn a lot of great information. So this paragraph right here, we're highlighting possible issues with equipment or runway. So if you can see the, the highlighted paragraph, I think that you can. Uh, there's a couple of items to pay attention to. For example, the, there are two airports at the very top, New Orleans and Nashville, that are closed, that have closed runways. So I'm going to zoom in really close so you guys and gals can see. Uh, all right. So you can see very well there. As we adjust and zoom in, there's a couple of airports we want to pay pay attention to. We want to look at look at uh, runway uh, 220 
that is closed until 226. So in New Orleans, that runway 220 is closed until the 26th. So as a plane spotter, that's great because you know that there's not going to be any runway takeoffs or airplane takeoffs or runway takeoffs. Uh, awesome, Justin. I'm glad that you brought the iPad uh, and the notepad. So you can see there, New Orleans, the runway is going to be closed. So you're not going to have any takeoffs or any landings on that runway. So as a plane spotter or somebody interested in that, uh, you will know that, for example, I won't be able to see any takeoffs or landings in New Orleans on that runway until after uh, 2300Z on the 26th, which would be Monday. Now, the next airport down, for example, it says runway 1331 is going to be closed until 3-15-24, so March 15th of 2020, or 2024. So those first two airports, they're going to tell us, just for example, you see a whole list of airports listed down there as we zoom out a little bit. Um, actually, you can see that fairly well. There's a whole list of airports that you can see um, that indicate what's going on. All right, so going back to going back to uh, this page. Remember, if you're just joining us, go to nasstatus.faa.gov and click on View Full Operations Plan. View Full Operations Plan, and that will get you to the page that we're looking at. So, for example, uh, there's a whole host of uh, cities and airports down there that have runway closures all right as we move up you've got ATC route possibilities you've got terminal plans so again those those planned ground stops those are possible programs that they're gonna have so this is really helpful this gives you an idea of what's going on throughout another tool to give you uh, information on what's going on in, in the entire airspace so thanks so much for everybody tuning in, smashing that thumbs up button, and uh, let me know if you can see everything okay so far. Um, I'm in the process of ordering a multi-HDMI uh, switcher so I can maybe have a little more flexibility, but right now it's just my laptop and a camera, so I apologize if it's a little dim. I've got the lights turned on, um, and, and uh, so uh, bear with me here. So I'm still learning. This is only our second episode. Uh, so let's go back. Let's rewind where we started. So if we have anybody who just tuned in or somebody forgot uh, to write this down, I want you to go to the website, nasstatus.faa.com. And uh, nasstatus.faa.com. I'll put it in the chat again. nasstatus.faa.com. I guess I should zoom out too, huh? Whoops. Sorry. But real quickly, go to that website and then scroll down to where we're at here. The mouse is highlighting View Full Operations, and that's the page we are on, View Full Operations. And um, I'm also going to purchase an eye, an eye pencil. So this will be good so that I can highlight some things. And so thanks for everybody sticking with me. Hi, Jevin. So with that in mind, uh, let's take a quick break here. Stop here and see what questions there are, if any, uh, and make sure to answer them. I know Joe said, I'm not working, but bet if you put a radar up on the East Coast, given those reroutes, ground stops, there are possible that there's weather out east. So let's... Uh, Let's take a look at the weather system here as uh, we go out east and uh, see what's happening. Oh, look at that. Severe weather ahead. All right. So we're going to go over to the Aviation Weather Center website. And I'm going to actually zoom back out so you guys can see everything a little better. So thanks for your patience on that. And uh, yes, 
Let's look it up. Let's look at the radar. Let's see what's happening. Joe says, let's look at the radar. Where is my radar? With the new page, uh, forecast observations. All right, so there you go. You get some weather. Zoom in. We talked about possible ground stops. Where? Where were there possible ground stops? In Boston, Las Vegas, and Newark. So you've got weather approaching Boston here on the radar that might present a problem. Keyword might present problems because planes and clouds don't get along. All right. Pilots do not like to fly into clouds uh, because they can't see anything. So it's not always the best. And they also don't like to fly into storms or icing conditions. So that's something we have to be aware of too. So there's the radar here. And uh, you've got this precipitation that may be causing issues in Boston, which is located up here. And then as we go down the mid-Atlantic, you've got Newark, which uh, might present a problem here. But it uh, looks like most of the precipitation is just to the east of uh, Long Island and, or east of JFK and also LaGuardia. But it's headed towards Boston. So that's why. So weather might be an issue. And then you've got showers down here that look like they're getting out of the D.C. area, which wouldn't be a problem. So that would line up with what we talked about earlier. So if we go back to the page uh, and we go down, uh, Boston ground stop delay program possible. So weather might be an issue for that. So that's something to keep in mind. It's a good observation, Joe. All right. Other questions. Tony, how do I love it? Uh, Tony's question is, how does the full operations plan enter commercial pilots' workflow pre-flight, if at all? Uh, and Susan, uh, we do have an A380 and 747s, uh, but not presently at the library. So we'll have those at TFW. So Tony, that's a great question. Uh, and let me answer that. Uh, a flight dispatcher is charged with presenting all pre-flight information uh, to the pilot. That's actually a federal requirement of any in route weather or um, operations anomalies, I, I guess is the best word to use. I can't remember the exact regulation words, uh, but they are charged with putting together what we will call like a flight plan or flight packet in the commercial world. Uh, so, for example, let's say uh, Delta Airlines, the flight dispatcher uh, dispatching flight 123 from Atlanta to Boston. In that scenario, the dispatcher is looking a couple hours ahead for planning this flight, and he's going to be like, oh, look at that. I've got w w weather in Boston here. And so he's charged as a flight dispatcher to provide the pilot with weather and any other operations anomalies he might see that affect the safety of flight. So to compress that uh, down to a flight plan, they'll include weather forecasts. They'll include current conditions. They'll include notice to air missions or airmen in what it used to be called or a notum. They'll include uh, in route notums. They'll include uh, any operations issues as far as different frequencies or things like that. They're charged with all of that. And sending that to the pilot, they usually pick everything up through iPad now. It used to be they would print it off a printer, and so it'd be quite a thick little packet. But now the pilots get everything via iPad uh, to you know, check on the route to see if there's any issues as far as weather. Uh, and any other operations anomalies. So the flight dispatcher is charged with providing that information to the pilot uh, as part of their responsibility. So to answer your question directly, Tony, yes. Great question. Hey, Dogwood, great to see you as well. Uh, Mark has an AV equation. What is the max speed for an aircraft have to be before takeoff? Oh, Joe, you guys still print it off? All right. Well, most, most pilots. <laughs> yeah, no problem, Tony. Uh, next question for uh, Mark. Now, Mark, that varies. That, I'll answer that question 
it varies. It varies on the weight of the plane. It varies on how long the runway is. It varies on uh, weather conditions because the higher altitude you're up, the thinner air is, and so you require more runway. Uh, so there's a lot of different things. So to answer your question directly, it depends. Now, if you wanted to email me or ask maybe a more specific question, I could probably get you a more specific answer. But it, it really depends. Usually, I mean, for like, for example, if uh, since I've worked with like uh, E-175s and E-190s the most, I would typically say a ballpark figure depending on uh, sea level pressure, like for Dallas, for example, your V speeds are going to be probably, I don't know, 140 to 160 knots is uh, your takeoff speed. But again, uh, that depends on a whole bunch of factors, Mark. That's why we run performance, and that'll be in another lesson. So great question there. All right, so any other questions before we go any further? Because this is uh, entertaining, I hopefully, uh, and... Uh, Appreciate it. And again, this is uh, our second episode for you new viewers. This is something we do every couple of weeks because, quite frankly, I would get the question a lot uh, on certain things. The, one of the questions I always got was, why, can the, why, why is the plane going to that side of the airport? Or why isn't the airplane landing? Or why is it just flying around in circles? And there's a lot of questions, hopefully, by these episodes that will allow you to be better informed and know this information because knowledge is power, right? Plus, it, it's also functional for plane spotting. If I were, for example, today's a North Flow, if I am going out there to do a live show later on at DFW, uh, I'm going to want to make sure I know where the winds are because that's going to affect where I point my camera or where I set up. So there's really a functional application to it. So, hey, Bubbag, great to see you. There you go, W, all the above. Bye, Susan. We'll see you again. Take care. All right. So we're talking about ATC today. Again, I didn't announce it, and I should have, and I apologize. So we're going to the website, nasstatus.faa.gov. And the next thing we want to look at, I'll give you an example. That's some cool basic backgrounds. So what we're trying to do in this lesson is really go through this website so that you as a passenger, as a dispatcher, as a wannabe dispatcher, as a wannabe pilot, you have this website as a reference or a wannabe air traffic controller so that you have a better idea of what's going on in the air traffic control system. Okay? So... We're going to continue to go on further, and we've talked about the front page. Now we're going to talk about some more technical stuff. And let's start with airport demand. So we're going to go to this page here, airport demand. I like this one because this is information I can share with you, the viewer, when we're doing plane spawning. And we're going to go to arrivals and we're going to select the airport so uh, my camera is like wigging out there apologize zoom out a little bit there we go so we're going to go here and uh, if you have a question uh, we'll answer some more questions about 235 so another 20 minutes so let's go to dfw for example So if you look at DFW, you'll see they'll have the demand for each hour uh, for that the upcoming hours. And I think we talked a little bit about this. But I like this a lot because it gives you an idea of, is it going to be a busy hour when I'm doing a live stream? Am I going to have to fill the time with little fun facts or have a conversation? Or is it going to be super busy? So, for example, here at DFW, if I were streaming at 5 o'clock, 5 o'clock here, uh, which is 2300 Zulu, 
if I were streaming at 2300 Zulu, if you can see that, we'll zoom in a little bit. A little bit further. I want to make sure that you guys can see that nice and close. What's up, Evan Plains? Good to see you, Tommy. Good to see you. And W, good to see you. Uh, so this one, for example, it's saying that for DFW, we're going to have 87 arrivals that hour. So in the 5 o'clock hour, that's a pretty good hour to do some plane spotting. You're going to see a lot of aircraft. <laughs> All right? So does that make s I think that makes sense to everybody. And then we're going to have a down hour like this with only 45 arrivals in the 6 o'clock hour. But then... During 7 o'clock, or 01 Zulu of the next day, so 224, we're going to have 89 arrivals. So another busy hour. So 89 arrivals in the 7 o'clock hour will keep ATC busy. So you'll have 90 planes arriving at DFW at 7 o'clock tonight. So this is a nice tool if you want to search airports, if you are expecting, if you want to know, okay, is there going to be a lot of traffic? Uh... As a plane spotter or a streamer, because I know we have some streamers who tune in. Uh, thanks, Tony. Appreciate that. And lets your friends know about everything. And thanks, everybody, for tuning in. So, yeah, this is perfect. Yeah, Tony, for example, this will be great for you. Uh, let's see if they have RDU. Okay, perfect example. Let's go to RDU. Because Tony, my friend, uh, the photographer, Tony wants to know, okay, are there going to be a lot of arrivals? And uh, this is a great tool for Carolina Aviation as well. So... We talked about DFW. My friends over there in uh, North Carolina, they, uh, they like to do some spotting. And if they're smart, they'll tune into my channel to educate them. So, for example, Tony, let's look at uh, 2200 Zulu. So uh, that is currently, where are we at time-wise? All right, it's 2014 Zulu right now, 2016. But let's look about an hour and a half ahead. So at uh, 2200 Zulu, and um, you have 19 total arrivals at RDU that hour. Then in the next hour, you have 23 or 15 total arrivals, right? Then as you go forward, you only have seven at double O Zulu. I like to call it double O Zulu. And uh, then it'll pick up. And then as Carolina always complains, oh, I never have anything to do. I never have any planes arriving. Well, you got to look at this because if you look at this, you'll know. So I give Carolina a hard time and he knows I love him. So, but you won't get more action until like nine o'clock, which would coincide with, um, you know, with, uh, his show, for example. So he's going to have a lot of arrivals tonight, Tony, in the 9 o'clock hour. So 16, 16 arrivals, which isn't quite as much as DFW, but there are a lot less runways as well. Uh, nut, nut, nutty Buddy and Friends, are you a member of the – I have not heard of that. So uh, I may have to join that. So you have to put a link. All right. So, yeah, this is a super helpful tool if you're out spotting – has airports listed throughout um, that you can go to as we zoom back out a little bit. I need to hire an assistant. <laughs> but you can see a whole list of U.S. airports there. There's uh, Newark, for example, uh, Detroit, DFW, Fort Lauderdale, Spokane, Honolulu. I mean, the list goes on and on. Very helpful tool. Just one of the many tools at NASStatus dot faa.gov all right so again we're talking about tools that will be helpful for you as a plane spotter as a dispatcher as a pilot as a air traffic control as a uh, just an interested aviation onlooker yeah tony absolutely and uh we're just getting started here because we'll want to do next week's uh, we're going to talk about ATC or next episode in a couple weeks again. All right. I really should have put up an announcement, 
but the uh, sun was kicking my butt yesterday. So moving on, I'm going to close out that window, and we're going to go back to this page here. All right. So it gives you a full list of options to choose from. I'm going to turn the camera a little bit that way so you can see the top page. So you have everything from advisories to airport demands to what are called EDCTs, but they're called edict times. And we'll kind of, I think it's better that uh, we save that for next week. But uh, you've got notums here, you've got reroutes, you've got restrictions, you've got RVR, you've got weather. So why don't we do this? Why don't we click on notums? Notums is an abbreviation. It stands for Notice to Air Missions. It used to be called Notice to Airmen, but I believe the government changed it to be more gender neutral. And uh, that is the reason for that. So we'll uh, check that out. Oh, not, Nutty Buddy and Friends, that's good to know. Thank you for sharing. So again, if you have a question, um, about 15 more minutes and we'll take more questions. But we went back to the home page for nasstatus.faa.gov. You go to NOTAMS. So I want you to click on that. I'd like you to follow along uh, if you want on your phone or tablet or computer. And uh, then we're going to click on NOTAMS. All right. So it says the site is, design is informational in nature and is designed to assist pilots and air crews for flight planning and familiarization. It may be used in conjunction with other pre-flight information and is not to be considered a sole source of information to meet all pre-flight action. All right. So, NOTAMs are basically an airfield's guide to, uh, for pilots, for dispatchers, for ATC. It is a guide so to speak, and I'm going to try and break it down in the simplest of terms of any operation anomalies. Anom you know the word, anomalies. There we go. So we talked about it a little bit earlier, the runway closure. We're going to look for runway closure. Let's, so let's type in, you said, I've understood everything. I'm going to type in the airport, BNA, right, Nashville. We looked up Nashville and uh, also... RWA, the RWA, or RWI, runway, all right? So we're going to search that. We're going to hit search, and then we're going to hit filters, and we're going to type in the, the abbreviation RWI for runway. So important to remember here in aviation, we basically use words, but we use them in abbreviated form, like with a METAR, for example. We also do that abbreviation style in uh notums so again notums are basically operational anomalies that might might affect uh operation of an airport or of uh a plane so yeah that's that's right thank you master key <laughs> All right so we looked earlier let's go back to what we were looking at earlier um Remember how we went down here on the home page and we went to view full operation plan and we saw in this paragraph that we had uh, runway equipment system impacts, right? You remember that? We talked about it 15 minutes ago and one of the f first two airports that were listed were Nashville. So Nashville runway 1331 is closed until 3:15:24. So let's go back to the NOTAMs. Do you think we'll see that in the NOTAMs? Well, it's, it's effectively affecting operationality of flight. So let's look and see if it's down here. Oh, and there it is. There it is. Let's go back to that, actually, that screen. Um, I'm going to double click on that. I'm trying to highlight it. There we go. So you can see in that the runway is listed as one of the NOTAMs. So notice to air mission. So it's saying, oh, that's actually ILS. Let me go up to uh, apologize. This one is saying runway 1331 is closed. And it's saying 
it's closed until from the 11th of November or the 6th of November at 1400 Zulu until the 3rd, let's see, March 30th, March 30th of 2024. You guys see that? Makes sense? See you, Mark. Good to see you. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see that really good. Man, I can't wait till I get the uh, switcher. Things will be a little more organized. Whoops. All right. So you see that hair? Now, if you want the deciphered, deciphered, uh, you can actually click on it, and it will actually translate it for you if you're not too familiar with this abbreviated code, or code, excuse me, not cold, code. I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to click on, we'll zoom out. So give me just a second here. We're going to zoom out here, and I'm going to zoom in on that, and it's going to say plain language, so not in domestic abbreviated code it's going to hit playing language so if you're not familiar with the vocabulary or the nomenclature of uh, notums you can click on that and it'll say look at that give you the notum number it'll give you the issuing airport it'll say when the uh, notum begins and when it ends and then it says runway 1331 operating status is now closed so it's closed from november 6th to march 30th then hope that makes sense <laughs> there you go exactly tony if air france hits a lamppost <laughs> so yes but this will click give you in plain language if you're not too familiar with notums uh, this will give you a good abbreviation and you can actually click on any of those notums as we zoom back out. I'm going to zoom back out here so we get the whole screen a little bit better. And I'm going to go back and there we can see the list of notums and they are everything affecting runway, taxiways, uh, procedures for the runways. So you've got procedures up there, you've got aerodromes, you've got obstructions. So Maybe there's a crane, maybe there's a building in the way, maybe there's a giant tree, you know? Those things are anomalies, operational anomalies to flight. So that's that's pretty cool stuff right there. So again, NOTAMS is just one of the categories uh, dealing with ATC. So when we talk about ATC, uh, this is you know, part of their process to run the field efficiently is to be aware of the NOTAMs that are around the airport so that they can safely run the operation from air traffic control from the tower, right? So NOTAMs are a tool for air traffic control. They're a tool for pilots. They're a tool for uh, also for uh, dispatchers, of course, and then for now, you guys and gals who are tuning in, uh, interested onlookers who are broadcasting, like, for example, Carolina Aviation. Let's see if there are any notums for RDU. He'll be doing a show tonight. Uh, and then I'll also, so we'll look up RDU. Type in RDU. Well, I'll go back to change the change search, excuse me. Uh, all right. And we're going to see if there are any issues. All right. So not too many at Raleigh-Durham. You do have a couple of NOTAMs, one of which is the localizer, the ILS localizer and glide path are unusable from or out of service, as I like to say, from uh, the 29th of January until March or April 26th. So if you have bad weather, there's a good chance that on uh, what is that you'll be arriving from the south the shorter runway may not be the runway that they're going to use so they're probably going to use 23 right which doesn't have the ILS or glide slope localizer out okay so great to have everybody in it's always nice to 
have everyone in. Now, five more minutes, and we'll go ahead and take some questions. So again, what we're talking about today, for those who have just tuned in, is we're talking about ATC, but this is only part one. There will be multiple sessions. But today, we're giving you an overview of air traffic control from like a national oversight perspective, all right, from this website, nastatus.faa.gov. So remember that website, again, nastatus.faa.gov, and I'll put it in the comments section after the video is published. Um, and there, so, all right. Let's see what's going on in the airspace world. Oh, look at that. We've got an updated ground stop to Aspen, so ASE. Let me turn the camera a little bit. So that airport in the upper left-hand corner uh, to the left, ASE, that is Aspen Pitkin County Airport in Aspen, Colorado. It says ground stop, and that ground stop is effective for another 30 minutes, and then they'll reevaluate it. Because it is currently 2030 Zulu, and that ground stop goes until 21 Zulu, and then they'll reevaluate it. All right? So great job, everyone. One other thing we'll talk about here, let's click on weather. Weather, when you look at the page, it'll go right to the radar. It'll go right to Aviation Weather Center, which we talked about last week that you can, and remember that website is aviationweathercenter.gov. All right, so we're going to see rain, you know, this may touch Boston, it may not. So that's why they said a ground stop or ground delay program is possible um, or not. So uh, let's break it right there uh, and see if anybody has any questions because I'm going to talk about one other thing for today that I want to hit. And then we'll talk about what we're going to uh, touch on in the next couple of weeks. So anybody have a question, an aviation-related question so far about what we've talked about with air traffic control and what uh, what might interest you or intrigue you. We've talked about it a lot today, so if your head is about to explode, you can always email me at pipsplanespottinglive at gmail.com. Let me do that. Yeah, yeah Tony, it is good stuff. I love talking about it, and knowledge is power. So I'm glad you're enjoying it. Uh, Colin, I don't know. You know, I'll uh, work on seeing if I can get the UK. That would probably be under Euro control, though. Um, so I'll have to do some research on that. So give me just a second here. Google Euro control airspace. Airspace management. I think it's privately run, t too. It's not a government agency's. Uh, Euro control, yeah, see, I believe Euro control is, and I don't know this too well, so if W or another flight dispatcher, I believe they are privately uh, funded. Let's see. Pan, sorry, to, but I'm not sure on that. Uh, Euro control is a hot mess. Vegas Don, is there a way to look only at 747 and 380 flights worldwide? Oh, that's a good question. You know, um, let me try a flight radar here and uh, see if we can help you out that way real quick. Do, 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 do. Um, let me log in here real quick. I don't know why it won't let me. All right, so... There are certain, and this is, I pay for the flight radar service. Um, I like it. It's like $3.99 for the gold service. And uh, let's go to filter, uh, anime. Let's filter um, flight tracker map, aviation data, aircraft. All right. So let's see. A340 family, A380 family. Let's click that. Oh, our engineers. Whoops. That's not good. 
Let's try something else. Let's try A350s. There is the number of aircraft that, uh, hmm. Uh, let's see, statistics, search. So if you know better than I do, feel free to put it down there in the chat, ladies and gentlemen. But I clicked on aircraft. Uh, no 380s allowed to fly. <laughs> but uh, Las Vegas Dawn, Vegas Dawn, I think that's uh, what you can do. You can go to filter here in the... Uh, upper right hand corner there is sorry need to move the uh, camera uh, you can go go to aircraft and see what that tells you it says the production list but uh, yeah so let me do search uh, search by flight search by destination city search by an aircraft registration what if I just type in A380? Well, there you go. There's a little bit of everything. So uh, um, I'm going to let uh, the ladies in. There you go, enemy. Filter, add new filter, add A380. Thank you. Uh, filter. See? This is why I have you guys. All right, there we go. Filter, add new filter, air, aircraft. See, thank you for teaching me, Anime. I did not know this. I would have figured it out, um, but uh, continue. All right. So let's zoom out for a little bit. Let's have a quick fun. So there's one A380 that is just landing now in Dallas. We know our A380. There's United Arab Emirates, 211, headed to Houston, And uh, then if we zoom over here to the West Coast, you've got, uh, we've got Korean Air right here, right? We'll zoom in a little bit. So there you go. Awesome. Thanks, Anime. And I hope that's helpful, Don. Looks like I was able to successfully follow Anime's excellent instructions. So you've got Korean Air. You've got uh, United Arab Emirates. You've got Asiana. You've got Korean Air. And then another United Arab Emirates. So pretty cool. Thank you, sir. Awesome. So if you're just joining us, uh, the uh, feel free to ask a question. Uh, now we're looking out globally. So look at that. Now we got all sorts of action. Uh, but uh, we are talking about air traffic control today. So let's summarize what we've talked about real quick. Uh, we've got a little bit of time left. I could go on for hours. I don't want to bore you, and they may kick me out at 3 o'clock. So, uh, or they may not. Let's see if they do. <laughs> yep. So I like Flight Radar uh, 24 myself. I usually go with the gold plan, which is like $3.99 a month. And I'm like, for $3.99 getting all that information, I'm all for it. So I think it's an excellent value. Rewinding on what we talked about today, we're going to go back home. We're going to go to this website called nastatus.faa.gov. And if you could, for a minute, if you're tuning in, make sure to smash that thumbs up button. Also, recommend me to all your friends, neighbors, loved ones as a great plane spotter and uh, support the channel. Uh, but I thought we'd do this because this is uh, something I like to do and educate. So our website we've been focused on today is nastatus.faa.gov, all right? And this is basically, again, the entire United States airspace, what's going on with it, what's happening. It's constantly updated. So right now we have six airports that have active airport events. You can scroll down on that. You've got a really uh, Aspen's got a ground stop due to other. Maybe it's animals on the field because Aspen is in the middle of the wilderness. And... Uh, yeah. So not too much going on in airspace, which is good. That means it's a good weather day, which means there really shouldn't be any issues as far as flying. If it is, it's probably related to either crews or mechanical issues. <laughs> so as we scroll down, the next thing we went to was view full operations planned. 
Oh, and look at this. If you joined us at the beginning of the show, you notice here at the left box, forecasted events. We used to have three forecasted events. Now they've taken Boston and Newark off the table. So it looks like the weather isn't playing as much of an issue as we thought it would about 40 minutes ago. So now we just have Las Vegas with a ground stop, ground delay program possible. So again, this website is constantly updated. It's updated by the Federal Aviation Administration, their command center in uh, suburban Washington, D.C. Today, we also talked about the Air Traffic Control System Command Center. So this is going to give me a whole list of issues that might affect aviation operations for uh, much of the aviation system for air traffic control. Like we talked about, runway closures. Is there a VIP, VIP movement? The president is not traveling today, which would make sense because he's hosting the governors of the states of the United States today uh, if you were paying attention to the news. So no VIP movements today. But this is very helpful. If you want to catch Air Force One, you know, this is a helpful tool to say, okay, for example, you know, where is Air Force One going to be, right? It's going to share a location uh, and the airport and the possible time. Air Force One is never on time. Air Force Two is never on time. But if you want to check each day and say, okay, is the president flying to Chicago today? Is the president flying to Dallas today? Uh, whoever the president is or the vice president is, um, you can check this website and uh, do this. Next thing we touched on beyond the full operations plan is we talked about or airport demand. Airport demand, you can go to this icon, click on it, and turn a little bit here the camera, and I'm going to select an airport. For example, since Carolina, I think, is still watching, we're going to zoom in, and he's got a show tonight. I'm going to zoom in here, and we're going to see what the arrivals are for tonight for RDU. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Chaotic Bean, no. No job in announcement yet. Uh, the next thing, Joe, yeah. Thank you for looking into the Aspen Ground Stop. It's true. It is ski season after all. So thank you, Joe. So for Carolina, for example, we'll just select RDU because Carolina Aviation is having a show tonight. All right. Walt's having a show tomorrow. I might have a show tomorrow. Uh, but we'll see. So anyways, let's talk about that for a second. Joe, you just need to, by the way, Joe, you just need to forget about Morgan and jump on the PIP train, dude. You know, it's you and me. Morgan is 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 a has-been. He, he missed his opportunity, and now it's you and me, dude. So I invite you to uh, join the PIP team. <laughs> so this is a radar or... Um, a schedule of active yeah, I guess zoom out a little bit come on camera there we go so for example we're gonna zoom in here because Carolina is gonna do a show in about an hour and 15 minutes so in an hour and 15 minutes there are going to be what how many let's see how many arrivals Carolina is going to have today so at 21 Zulu Actually, what time is it now? 4 o'clock, so it would be 22. So in the 5 o'clock hour, he's going to have 19 arrivals. Carolina Aviation is going to have on his live stream. And then he's going to have 18 arrivals in the next hour. But then he starts whining. and He's like, oh, I don't have any arrivals. Well, if he had looked at the airport arrival demand chart, you would notice that he only has seven arrivals in the show in <laughs> the seven o'clock hour so after the next two hours he's going to have a little lull and then he in the eight o'clock hour he's going to have 10 and in the nine o'clock hour he'll be back up to 16. so again these are all helpful tools for you as an aviation enthusiast as a plane spotter as a live streamer um as somebody who wants to be in the information no in in the knowledge uh paradigm uh, these are all very helpful oh two hours and 15 minutes carolina all right well shoot you're gonna miss one of the busy hours dang it 
I know, man. This would line up, though. You always you always say, oh, we don't have really any arrivals in the 7 and 8 o'clock hour, but then 9, super busy. Well, this would line up with what you've been seeing. So, again, knowledge is power. Look at these things. Use it to your advantage. That's all I'll say. Uh, yes, the arrival demand is updated live based on diversions, whether... Th it, no, I should say this, Tony, that it's based on scheduled arrivals. Now, if you look closely here, it's scheduled arrivals. So, for example, um, you can see on the far right left part of the screen, Tony, is the black part is planes that have already arrived in that hour. So that was... F uh, let's see, we're at... So this is the current hour we're at right now. Okay, so we are at 2045 Zulu as far as Zulu time. The black, uh, the black represents a, the planes that have arrived, okay? So if we look right here, uh, black, they've got 11 planes that have already arrived in this hour at uh, the, tw the, the 20 Zulu hour, and there are seven that still need to arrive, okay? And the green is the planes that are in the air right now. Uh, or excuse me, the, the um, uh, green is the planes that are scheduled to depart. Let me rephrase that. So then you have planes in the red that are currently en route. So black represents planes that have completed their flight or arrived. The red are planes that are active or currently either in the air that are about to take off or have just landed and not blocked in. And then the light green is scheduled planes that have not taken off yet. Those are scheduled. So, yeah, Joe works in aviation. Joe's a great flight dispatcher. Uh, I used to, obviously, like I've talked about and hopefully will again. Uh, Morgan, if you ever tuned in, would uh, jet dispatcher is a flight dispatcher too. Uh, who else? D -d 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 uh, who do I have that shows up regularly? Joe, Jet Dispatcher. Have some pilots that show up. Um, Captain Noah. Uh, let's see who else. So, yeah. Joe's a, one of the great flight dispatchers. Uh, David Cox was a former uh, air traffic control personnel. Yeah. So uh, Tony says these flights are plans are yes these are flight plan these are flight plan based on the schedule that the airline has published uh, to air traffic control, which will probably is a good segue to talk about what we're going to talk about next week is when you are in air traffic or next uh, in two weeks from now hopefully when you're in air traffic control we're going to talk about uh, the process for filing a flight plan, uh, little nuances with dealing with that. And then we're going to put it into functional knowledge. Now that you have this background, we're going to go to flight radar next week and we're going to talk about flight patterns. So what we hope to accomplish in the next broadcast is talk about flight patterns because give you a rundown here. Let's, let's go back to flight radar. Let's remove the filter if we can. If I'm smart enough to remove the filter, uh, exit out of that and do this. So I'm going to zoom back out here for a quick second. Actually, I'm going to zoom in. So give me one moment. I'm going to zoom in to DFW. All right. So we're going to zoom in to DFW, which is located right there. And there you can see a bunch of planes surrounding it. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. That, that makes me feel better knowing I don't know about great. That makes me feel better knowing that I missed a spot out to you. So that's great. <laughs> and Morgan always says, I don't know. I don't know anything. I'm like, well, that makes me feel better. So I'm unemployed here, and you guys are both like, I don't know. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, but to answer your question, Tony, they are flight plan base, and the numbers can be updated on arrival demand. Yeah, like 
Carolina complains like, oh, there's a there's only 130 flights today. Well, you know that's based on demand, and that changes with uh, airport schedule. So, so you see DFW here, and we're going to talk about the next broadcast a little bit of a teaser. That in the next broadcast, you see all these planes, and they're just randomly in the air, right? Well, there's a purpose to everything. I'm I'm just going to tease this with if if you see. If you see these planes and you think there's no pattern to them, you're wrong. There's an air traffic control pattern to everything, especially in a large metropolitan area with DFW with a major airport. So next next uh, broadcast, we're going to talk about um, fill you in on what ATC strips are. We're going to fill you in on what SIDS and STARS are. And we're going to show you patterns for air traffic control so that you can be better informed when you're a spotter. So uh, maybe, and uh, so that when you uh, are taking over for PIP, like for example, in DFW or Salt Lake or whatever, you can see, oh, there's a Singapore Airlines cargo, 747. What are the, what's the likelihood that it's gonna take off on the west side on Founders Plaza here? Or is it going to take off uh, on the east side? Well, it depends. So, and or for example, this flight that just took off from DFW. It is a flight from DFW to San Francisco. Why, Pip, does it always take off on the west side? Well, we're going to talk about that. And uh, that's some of the things we're going to talk about next week. So we're going to do a quick review, but uh, or not next week, next broadcast uh, in a couple weeks. But the next thing we're going to talk about is why is uh, why do certain planes get set, routed a certain way? We're going to talk about SIDS and STARS. We're going to talk about ATC strips um, and just some things of general interest that might be fun to find out so that you can get a better understanding of what's, what it's like to be air traffic control, to be a spotter, to uh, do that. Oh, nice. TJW International, plane over plane, I was passing over your house. So let's see. Did you see which plane it is? Yeah, see, Joe, and that's what I say. I don't ever want to hear Joe. I don't ever want to hear Morgan say, I don't know anything, because every time he says it, it gets me enraged. I'm like, well, then how did he get a spot and I didn't? So I'm going to punch him in the face next time he says that. So to be fair, yeah, I know, Joe, you're probably pretty good. So Morgan's my friend, everyone, and... uh we're just talking flight dispatch. So TJW International, you are in Plano. Let's see. All right, so we're guessing that a plane just went over TJW's house. So if that's correct, that's American 1177 from uh, Washington Reagan to DFW. So... There you go. Good job. And uh, we've got a few minutes less left. Ask me some questions. I obviously can't talk, but what I can do is uh, answer some questions for you. Oh, Qatar's landing all the way on 3-5 right. That's rude. I've thought about doing a broadcast, watching a broadcast, and doing, doing like a play-by-play, -play, like an editor's cut of either watching Walt or Kevin and uh, just doing the play-by-play -play or uh, director's cut, like kind of the inside, inside analysis, like Peyton Manning and his brother Eli. Thanks, Matt, man. Appreciate that. Oh, nice. Awesome, TJW International. Very cool. You'll see a lot of planes arrive uh, over Allen and Plano. For example, if we zoom in, we're going to uh, zoom in on Plano and Allen here on the east side. And so this is an arrival pattern from uh, PSA from Chattanooga to Dallas. So CRJ 900 LR. What's up, everybody? I it's, Seriously, it, it, it's going to be an episode of, of Spots the Spotters. Um, let's see if, you know what, I'm just going to do it, Joe, just since we have a couple minutes left and nobody's asked any questions. Uh, and I hope everything you, that I explain is 
uh, good, but um, more importantly that it, you understand it, it's educational, and uh, you enjoy it. Because really, as we're into YouTube here, I'll go over and zoom out so we can see the screen. Um, so, <clears throat> let's watch Sal's stream for a few minutes here. <clears throat> Hi, Mark Bardman, Sandy Hook Thomas here. <clears throat> when the gunman at 2679 Hotel, the Julia Gates, <clears throat> Old Short 25, right? <laughs> All right, so we're going to watch. We're going to watch and see what planes are next. We're going to go full screen. And so Sal looks like he's on the uh, south side today. All right, Tony, great. Thanks so much for tuning in. Joe's and Richardson, nice. Penn from West Plano. That's awesome, TJW International. That's very true, Joe. The arrival demand chart is deceiving in Los Angeles or Las Vegas. But just to give you a general barometer, uh, yes, that that is fairly accurate. But they, again, everything is is circumstance to uh, weather and arrival conditions and everything else too. Uh, British Airways, London Heathrow, British Airways, two WC. Let me see that. That's a great question, Matt man. Uh, let's go up to Chicago. That may be just a registration code. Uh, that's right, Joe. That's a good observation too. Uh, there's Air New Zealand 6. Uh, let's see. I don't know, Matt Man. I'll have to do some research on that. But I think it may just be the registration code for the plane or the last letters. So there's an A321neo. <laughs> I'm going to spot the spotters. <laughs> I'm just going to call it spot the spotters and I'm just going <laughs> to broadcast their content and educate you at the same time. <laughs> That's so cheap. That's so cheap. Oh man. But it's entertaining regardless, so. Anyways, um, while we have a minute, I wanted to take a second and say thank you to everybody who tuned in. I mean, yeah, you go to Hawaii, uh, you can bring back two point apples. There you go, Joe. Uh, Joe one. knows the answer. I don't know about the other airlines. Excellent work. How many, uh, All right, hotel, many, uh, what's Lima, so I'm sure that uh, there's, a, there's a better way to do this, but uh, I'm just kicking back here just for fun with everybody. So... Thanks, Joe. Appreciate that. Very helpful. Joe is is of an experienced dispatcher. Silver Wings, yes. Totally. Actually, it's not. But anyways. All right. Back to um, back to Fly Radar here as we close out the show. Again, let's go to the website one more time here uh, while we have a moment. Penn, glad to hear you had a good flight from Houston to DFW on the A319. Uh, make sure to smash that thumbs up button. Actually, um, and uh, let's go back to the National Airspace System website. So for those who are tuning in, thank you so much for everybody tuning in. Uh, but just a reminder, again, website, knowledge is power. Hey, thank you, Michael. Glad that uh, you enjoyed it and tuned in and learned something. Very relaxing. I'm going to give you two websites here in the chat. Remember this. You're going to go to Aviation Weather Center. Uh, Joe, we, we, uh, Joe, we got to get together sometime, by the way, and get some barbecue or some... Uh, Whataburger and and uh, or Culver's, but uh, anyways, um, yeah, JB, very helpful. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that it's been very informative. 
Uh, we look forward to doing the next episode. This uh, I love doing this and educating people because then we can have a better conversation about av- aviation because I don't want anybody to feel left out. Uh, so aviationweathercenter.gov, that's one of the main websites. Um, NAS status. Yeah, dude, you didn't know there were culvers? There's two culvers. There's one in, uh, there's one in the colony that Morgan never wants to drive to because he's too lazy because uh, it's near my house. And then there's one in Flower Mound. I also think there's one over in Fort Worth. So, yep. So going back to the website here, closing out everything. Remember, once you... Good. I'm, I will see what we can do and provide for you. Uh, JB, we will do our best. AJD says British carries you use a combo of numbers and letters. I believe it's the squawk. Very helpful. Uh, more. <laughs> more gets lazy. <laughs> oh, that was fantastic, Joe. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> oh, you guys. Yeah. So this is a really helpful website, nastatus.faa.gov. Um, and Joe is a good flight dispatcher. Morgan's a great flight dispatcher, but we, we like to have a little fun because uh, I was a former flight dispatcher, as many of you know. But write these two websites down. Play with them. They're free. They're from the national government. They are meant to be used as an educational tool to be better informed. I kind of wish we had like a bad weather day so I could show you some of the things, but... Um, yeah, one thing, I guess one other thing I'll, I'll touch on real quick since nobody's kicking me out yet. Yeah. And a very few Sonic covers is great. Big in the part country I'm in. Yeah. But we have no Whataburger or in and out. That is sad. But, uh, one thing real quick, I'm going to show you edicts, uh, expected departure clearance time. Uh, actually we'll talk about that next week. So I don't want to blow your blow your minds too much yeah absolutely. that's right joe that's right it's very true it is very true so hey i want to take a moment to thank everybody for tuning in uh i really appreciate your questions and comments make sure you bring them to our next show which hopefully will be in two weeks uh there's a lot that could happen in the next two weeks for me i'm hopeful that i'll start my new job but i still haven't gotten a start date yet or a letter of official starting. So in the meantime, I'll be doing this. I'll be live streaming. I'll be doing everything else uh, in the meantime until I get that information uh, and in further. So I was going to announce it today, but there was a little hiccup. So until I get that official letter of employment and recommendation, um, I, uh, I'm not going to officially announce everything, but until then, thank you everybody for tuning in. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for your patronage and tuning in. I guess this is kind of like a college class, a little over an hour and a half. Um, and, uh, hopefully you learned something today and can share with somebody else. And please don't forget if you enjoyed this to like, and not only like, but also share this with fellow plane spotters. So they'll be, uh, interested in subscribing to the channel and, uh, learning more about aviation and plane spotting. Uh, because remember here at Pips Plane Spotting Not Live, we do three things. Uh, we educate about aviation, we entertain, and we elevate the conversation about aviation and we make all your streams come true too so thank you again everybody for tuning in i'm going to end the show so uh thank you so much and everybody have a great friday we'll uh, probably stream over the weekend we'll let you know more as we get closer to that time but for now uh thank you so much for everybody tuning in uh have a great day uh and have an excellent afternoon and weekend so thank you so much and look forward to seeing you all again on the next stream take care everyone We will see you later, and uh, have a great afternoon. See ya.